Well, hey, howdy, hello to you. It's been a couple minutes. How you guys doing? Uh, it's very special today. I got the opportunity to do Shoving Wilco podcast, podcast all about Wilco. Very nervous and excited. <laughs> my, little, my little setup, my camera, my microphone, doing my little doing my little thing, whatever I do. They just found my video, like uh, the vinyl shootout you may have seen that I did a couple of years ago. I just compared the pressings. I went through it. I loved the album. Ended up keeping that one, the gold one. You know, I just love showcasing the beautiful people in the community, the music that I love. That's why we're here. And uh, it's cool to talk to fellow music nerds who are also just chill fans. So we're excited to do that. I got to jump on right now. So here we go, guys. Wish me luck. Here goes nothing. Show me a computer. Mic check. Check one. I can't. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> right, okay. Mastered by Bob Ludwig or something. I don't know. Happy to be here. I'm happy to, to be a part of the conversation because I just love this stuff. I, there's some cool to that. I love doing it live. I, I wonder if it would be like, oh no, is it the 08? Does the 08 have this? We'd really nerd out and then it'd kind of just be like, you know what I mean? I, okay. We might have some some similarities because I do audio video freelance stuff and I most of my gigs are now with my dad, which is kind of cool, but doing making content, uh, editing audio and editing video and working, working mostly from home. So like, I'm in Jacksonville, Florida now. When I recorded that video, I was up in Cincinnati. So I just moved down here. I haven't been here long. Uh, Jacksonville, kind of getting settled in. This is a different setup than the video, completely different space. <laughs> oh, you've seen a few things. Yeah, sounds great. I, I'm not super active on social. I have like Twitter and, uh, and I've been trying to get back into Instagram. I do have that, but I'm like very, and TikTok, very much uncharted, untapped territory for that. I've just kind of done this. It's crazy how you can get tons of views, but like no engagement, especially on, on TikTok. But but uh, they pump those views up and it feels nice. I posted me like shaking booty to like uh, Hot To Go by Chapel Road just for fun. It got like a thousand views. I'm like, I, I, like everything else I posted was 20 views, but there you go. <laughs> hey, howdy, hello, Tim and Todd. So cool to share this space with so many other cool people who've been in this space before. I'm just so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so I'm 28. I discovered them in about 2016. And I was kind of thinking about this, how I retraced the steps back to how I found it totally un, untraditional, unorthodox. Video rabbit hole. So I go down the Julian Lodge rabbit hole. I bump into Nels Klein. Crazy, right? Nels Klein, because he did the the cool experimental jazz and like this $5,000 claw. Uh, I was like, whoa, this this guy's... And, th and then he mentioned Impossible Germany Live. He's like, yeah, I do this for Impossible Germany. And it blew me away. I'm like, I got to hear this. Kind of like friend zoned Wilco for a while. Like would watch their live vids, um, like how they would perform together. Loved it, vibed out. Kind of on shuffle play, kind of bits and pieces. Then I like fell in love. Like something hit me when I sat down and listened to Yankee Hotel Fox track. That was, it was just, there was something that got me. And then I was in love ever since. <laughs> exactly. That's not fair. I know. Well, you were. <laughs> There was something magical, I know, I mean, people talked about it to death in video essays and tried to analyze why. There's something to me, that time, it, Jay, Jay Bennett's little flourishes, rest in peace, like his songwriting at that time, uh, talking about Jeff Tweedy, of course, and the, earlier on in that space that they had, the loft in Chicago, maybe there's, I don't know, I, I'm not super superstitious, but like, I have a feeling that there's some magic in there. And I think Jim O'Rourke coming in, being the voice of reason, just the heart of the band, like do whatever you want. Creativity just shining through. The Beatles Let It Be documentary and, and uh, I'm Trying to Break Your Heart. 
a little bit of the similarities watching this mysterious feeling in it the, uh, just like things not going the way that Jeff Tweedy wanted in some cases but sort of like shooting for the stars landing in the moon and that sonic landscape around the good songs I think it captures that feeling that just keeps us coming back Well, uh, when a band gets that pressing time and the record goes into queue, the plant gets uh, the, the soft lacquer cut in a special room and you get these stampers. So those stampers, they, they go for a little nickel bath, a little silver bath, and, and then they go press maybe a thousand, right around a thousand and before they start going bad. And, you know, different plants have different standards of excellence. Some are specialty plants fun aesthetic uh different for plants there's test pressing color variants 120 gram 140 gram 180 gram 200 all this stuff and, and all the differences and nuances make it kind of fun to hunt and research those differences it feels good on vinyl in the room and, and i could talk about this we listening to it in the room listening to it on headphones airpods whatever like there are these nuances that you can appreciate on the analog medium. It's what's funny too, like once you start digging into the mastering too, you start recognizing names. You do, and you hear all the vinyl people talk about it. The mastering especially, it it is that little pixie dust at the end. Like, truth be told, it can be transformative and it can be ridiculous. Like, it can be, it can be divisive. There's lots of good names, but truth be told, you just have to look at it and see for yourself because the differences between this 2022 remaster and the original shocked me. It, it truly did. I I went into it going, uh, just different version of the album. Maybe it'll hit a little. No, it, it really did sound different. Certain things set way back, especially on the O2. Uh, that they, they were nice and peaceful at times. And then sometimes I was like, wow, that 2022 did fix that moment where pot kettle black drums like explode or or camera where his voice really like Jeff Tweedy's voice really fills in the space a little more in the 2022 even if I like elements of that nice why does it master of the original it gets really complex I'll go back and answer the vinyl question first I think that was interesting too because talking about this with like my parents their experience with vinyl totally different all they had it was the radio uh, vinyl collection from their parents or whatever they had as kids. No, digital. Like, something that drew me to vinyl. Of course, I'm an audio video nerd. I, I do this for work, too, like freelance audio video work. I love it. Natural, like, affinity. And before I started even buying it, I was hearing people talk about, to be honest with you, truth be told, like, you know, this stuff could be collectible one day. We got stuff selling at auction for big prices. <laughs> like, maybe y'all should start collecting and looking at the stuff. This was, you know, 2015, different era, uh, very different, 10 years. And I started buying just a couple things that I liked, albums that I really, really love, set, found in a, a second in Charles bookstore, like Tycho, he's a cool electronic artist that I love, bought his, bought Kendrick Lamar to Pimp a Butterfly. I love those albums. I just found those on the shelves, like 25 bucks. Great time for vinyl. <laughs> it's like 40 bucks now. Here is, and I'm an audio nerd. Remember, I'm like, I care about sound quality. I have nice speakers in the room. I got room treatment. I got all this fancy stuff that I care about sound, right? And then I got Crosley turntable, try to spin vinyl. Analog part, the collectability part, the cool aesthetic. You gotta be honest. There's something cool and aesthetic about it. The physical part holding it in your hand. But whenever I grab, reach to go grab something and put it down, I remember why I love this format and I sit here and I just enjoy it. And there's, there's just something to be said for that. It's magic. And then you add up all these little things. We can get the symbols are here. The, the drums sound louder on pot kettle. Like certain things pop out more, certain things sit back. All of these little, it's, it's amazing how many things that are different in general. But like you got a white pressing or a black pressing or a gold pressing you're kind of splitting the hairs, especially on lower end setups, starting out, you know, people looking at this like, which one do I buy? Is it really gonna make a big difference? I had these same questions. Big reason why I started this channel, just like curiosity. Am I gonna like suffer? You can suffer. You just have to look into it. There's way more to look at. 
uh, where it was pressed. Uh, it, it, are they a plant that has a history of like going over a thousand stamp, you know, pressing a thousand with that one stamper or not cleaning it properly or having defects? There's a huge issue with Radioheads. The Kid Amnesia remaster, but I've documented that too. It was hilarious. And it is good that we have this database discogs like you're talking about to know this stuff, to hear people in an open forum discuss this. <clears throat> this is the conversation I feel like more people should have. This is the reason I started just making videos and talking about this stuff that I love, to showcase the people that I love, the music that we love. And uh, it's the perfect format for that. And what does it do for me? Like the space, even in, the, in this album and in uh, so many albums, there's a space, there's a feeling that it takes you into. Uh, like right now, it's seasonal kind of fall vibes and wintry a little bit. And there's a feeling that I like to listen to, even based on the season. There's season of life, things happening. It, uh, you know, there's something about throwing it on the background and kind of working or getting stuff done. But there's also something about sitting down, being patient, not getting it right away. Like, letting it sit with you, investing in the artifact. Like how much good stuff out there isn't instant, like grows on you over time. Like good coffee? Like <laughs> would you go for instant coffee? A lot of music out there too is like instant coffee, man. I <laughs> like I I love all music, all genres. So much music that's coming out now is good and new. And the classics too, man. There's something to be said for both and I I think the reason why we're still here, why we're still talking about Yankee Hotel Foxtrot, we're talking about songwriters and and the love for listening to it and playing back in the room and enjoying it. I think it's I think it's the same thing throughout time. Like our ancestors passed it to us. Uh, the experience of experiencing a life, the experience of listening to it with friends, the car while you get to absorb it, and everything that it does to you. And could we go on for hours? Yes, we could. <laughs> We love music for all of those reasons. Preach. I'm trying to go back actually systematically and do like favorite albums from every year of my life and talk about why, talk about the music. There was an album, uh, Low Moon. Oh, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, Low Moon, this band. Uh, I've, I've shown them my... Oh, my dad loves them too. He loves like war on drugs type, like uh, that just uh, almost 80s a little bit, but like just vibey and good. Low Moon showed him some of their stuff. And it was, that album came out during a time when my family was processing the death of our, uh, gr my great grandma, my dad's grandma, and like the family coming together around that time, kind of rekindling like oh, the family parts too. Like, that just, I always think of that. Every every single song on the Low Moon self-titled album talked about it, a whole video talking about that. I had struggles with anxiety in 2019. James Blake's Assume Form, like, like really helped me during that time. It just, like you said, uh, to, like speaking to me in that album, it, it, it could go on way to that too, but oh man. Yes, a whole conversation around that, please. Impossible Germany, dude. Like, I, okay, in August of this year, I went through, like, to be honest with you, I went through this really quick, almost like a relationship. It was literally, like, just so heated and fast and, like, just a blip on a radar. And, like, every line that Jeff Tweedy talks about in that song, gorgeous and alone, face to face. Like, there were just, I, I heard it in the car in August after the, all that happened lost it like completely just broke down nothing more important than to know someone's listening but you're not listening oh i can't do and dude in the guitar solo by nails klein and he does and the thing oh. Ah. Oh. yes <laughs> oh i heard you say that oh my god Oh, uh, like, 
the thing, I, in, in, I read Jeff Tweedy's uh, autobiography, like, uh, this was probably around 2019. When did it come out? I think it was 2019, like right after it came out. Um, and knowing his backstory too and the stuff that's going on, I was like, just, oh, there's so much depth there, but there's, like you said, when someone's feels like they're speaking to you and they're talking about real stuff, you know this band, they're so cool. This band's so cool, man. Like these guys and the lineups change over the years, but like the lineup they have now is cool. The lineup they had back in Yankee Hotel Foxtrot is cool. Like there's something to be said for the fact that like, it's cool to see a band operating at this level that's writing songs of this caliber that's still going, that has three decades of hits and the hits keep coming and the live shows are a bit. Yeah. Someone ought to do something. <laughs> Somebody out there, please. <laughs> it, we'll be right. Yes. Oh my gosh. Will do. Guys, I appreciate it so much. Appreciate you stopping by the channel, finding me, this little Mark out here just doing what, what I love doing and you guys have such i mean i'm again like you had stir it and you had like like I, this podcast space is cool uh and yeah everyone at home like man it's this is such a cool community this is why we do it right like sharing in the, in the community around this wonderful band that's it <laughs> appreciate that <laughs> Yeah, man. I think I need to do spend a little more time when I'm evaluating, especially pressings that are very, very different. Like these. Some of my vinyl shootouts, I can look back and go, oh, look, it's cool. It's purple. Yeah, you know, like, whatever. But, like, some of them are like, okay, why do you want this one? So, yes, I'm teach. I, I don't feel like an expert in a lot of ways, but like I have to sit down and say, okay, well, if I've spent 5,000 on speakers and thousands on this and like I'm looking at the waveforms, let's let's dive in a little bit and look at this. I like that. That's cool that you're interested in that at all too. <laughs> I did. I can think of an example where I did make a video of that. I saw this band LS Dunes. They're kind of like emo super group of like four different bands that I liked went and saw them I did the vinyl shootout of them and I saw them live and man I love doing that that kind of stuff and the conversations around yeah that that exact thing because I think it's going to be life transforming I just have a feeling like those guys man like yeah well and I, I told you guys like that was how I discovered them like uh, the Nels Klein Julian Lodge live stuff and then the, he mentioned Impossible Germany I looked it up <laughs> like the live version so oh yeah it, that people need to know like I mean you're spending 50 bucks like pretty much nowadays like I would like to get something that kind of sounds okay but that I don't live here anymore song that really hit my dad talk about songs that hit people at the right time it was when we, we moved here uh, to Jacksonville and uh, <laughs> he was like everywhere to that song you just why the time flies whoa it's great <laughs> oh my god the hips just man yeah Dude, that's great. Yes. I'm here for it. <laughs> I'm going to look up their tour schedule right now. <laughs> what? Yeah. Oh, that is kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> They're doing California, Texas. I'm, I'm looking through their schedule now. I need to... Ah, uh, Charlotte's not... Miramar, that's what you're talking about, Miramar. That'd be worth it. A little drive, maybe get a hotel and chill. With a bunch of other bands, too. 
team because I, I I'm just a guy out here. I love this stuff. I I just appreciate being here. It's great, and uh, I feel like and again like I just have to say I really appreciate the people in the community who are setting the stage for these type of conversations. That's what it's about. It ain't about me or it, it's really about showcasing this stuff. That's why I'm here. Man, I feel it. I feel the, the the friendship. This is this is so cool, man. I keep in touch. I got your info, so yeah, man. For sure, is you too, man. Appreciate it, Todd and Tim. Take care, man. Am I still on, dude? Got off podcast with Todd and Tim from the Shoving Wilco podcast. Th- that was so fun, dude. Like, I did this video two years ago just talking about, like, why I love this stuff. And now I get to sit down and find beautiful people in the community who are also in love with this stuff. But, like I said, man, it ain't about us. It's just about showcasing this beautiful stuff that we love. It's funny that it, it was over this album, too. Like, this album has such a, a huge hipster <laughs> fan base that, like... Truth be told, there's not like 10 people my age. If I pulled them right now, they'd be like, what is this? They may have seen memes about this, but have never actually listened to it. And here we are like, so cool, man. I'm, I'm an expert on vinyl. This has inspired me to talk more about looking at the things physically, like the physical waveforms. Tim's right. Like I could explain some of the differences a little bit more. There is some truth to showing hey, this is what I got. This is what I'm hearing and uh, (laughs) that you're not being scammed. You know, there are examples of people like swapping things out and trying to hype beast people out (laughs) of a collectible, a cool collectible. And uh, that's not cool, man. That's not very wholesome chungus to do that. There's, (laughs) this community is great. So now I just have to book tickets to the next Wilco show and uh, and hop back on the pod. Wilco, I love you, baby. Uh, appreciate you guys stopping by. Keep on grooving your way.